Don't push too hard, Joseph. And it's finished. Wow, that's wonderful, Joseph. Matthew, Matthew, where are you? I'm here. Hey, what are you doing? Can't you see? I'm playing with Joseph. Who? Oh, I made a new friend while you were playing a stupid game. His name is Joseph and only I can see him. <laughs> That's so stupid. Oh, you think so? Then you can go away. I'm having so much fun playing with Joseph. Oh, come on, Matthew. Come on, Joseph. Let's go somewhere else. You're sorry. Now come on. What's going on here? Father John! Father John. Good, Good morning, morning Father. Father! Father, Matthew's angry at us for not playing with him. And now he has made up an imaginary friend and he is refusing to play with us. Oh, <laughs> an imaginary friend? Is this true, Matthew? Uh, I... I... What's the name of your friend? His name is Joseph. Wow! You know in Bible there's a story about a Joseph, a man who could interpret his dreams. Really? And his name was Joseph? Yes, his name was Joseph, the son of Jacob. Was he the son of Jacob who was known as Israel? Right, Lucy. I can see that you haven't forgotten the story I told you the other day. Father, was Joseph really able to read his dream? Yes, children. Do you want to hear his story? Yes, Father. All right, sit down then. Joseph was the first child born to Jacob and his favorite wife, Rachel. With the birth of Benjamin, her second child, Rachel died. Jacob loved Joseph the most, which made his brothers jealous. Uh, this is heavy. Oof, it's so hot today and it's not even noon yet. Hmm, yes, it's getting hotter every day and all our crops are dying. Don't stand there and talk. We have to finish this by evening. Yeah, we can, if our father's pet will help us. Hello everyone. Why are you here? Nothing. Father asked me to check on the progress, so I came here. Father's little pet has come to check on our work. Ha <laughs> ha. What? Why are you angry with me? Leave! Leave me! Ugh! Father is expecting you to have this field harvested by sunset. We can finish this field by noon, if you can help us. I can't do that. I have to go to other fields to inspect. He is younger than all of us. Why should we take orders from him? And it's done. Is that for me, father? No, son. It's for your brother. It's a gift for him, as it is his birthday today. Father, will I get a same one when I get older? Haha. <laughs> of course, dear. I'll get you one when you're 17 years old. I don't know what their problems. <sighs> wow, this is amazing. Do you like it, son? It's... it's wonderful. Joseph, this is a gift for your 17th birthday. 
Oh, thank you so much, Father. What is that? What? Look at Joseph's coat, you fool! Wow! Our father must have given this to him. And we are here to work like slaves. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen! I had a strange dream last night. Oh, shut up! We are not interested in your dreams. Stop it, Joseph. Tell us about your dreams. I dreamt that we were each tying up our sheaf of wheat. And when we had finished, your sheaves of wheat bowed down to me. Did you mean that we bowed down to you? So, you want to rule over us? Is that so? I... I don't know. What did you mean? None of us will ever let you be our king. All right, all right. Just forget it. I'll tell you about another dream. What? You rode a flying camel? <laughs> or were you flying yourself in the skies? <laughs> Maybe one of us will kick you so strong that you'll end up flying. <laughs> Perhaps. Perhaps I shouldn't bother. Come on, Joseph. Okay, I dreamt I had climbed a mountain. I looked up and saw the sun, the moon and the stars. And they all bowed down to me. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but father, why are you entertaining Joseph's fantasies? You must have patience, son. If it is the will of God, then we'll all bow down to Joseph. Ha! I had enough. It's because you always favor him that he has such grand delusions. Judah, come back. Joseph, go to Shekin and see how your brothers are doing. Yes, father. It's a long journey, so it would be better if we can leave by tomorrow itself. Sure, father. I will leave tomorrow at dawn. Good. You should be back in 12 days, God willing. Don't worry, father. No harm will come to me. Following his father's instruction, Joseph left for Shechem. He traveled for many days and finally reached where his brothers were working. Oh, look who's coming. The dreamer? Perhaps we should all bow down to him. Our father's spy. I'd like to break his bones. Ha! Huh. I say we kill him today and get rid of him forever. Brothers, listen. We could throw him in that empty well over there. No one will ever know. No, but we cannot kill our brother. We are not gonna kill him. Shut up! He's coming! Oh, leave me! Made in Egypt, is it? Just for father's pet. Ha! Huh. Leave me! What are you doing? You think you can rule over us? Forever? Hold him, guys. Leave me! Ugh, leave me! Come on, guys! Stop! He's our brother! Stop! Stop! No! Ugh, stand aside, you! Leave me, please! Let us know if you have a dream. Ha ha ha! Now, throw him! <laughs> oh! So, it is done. Brothers, help me! Hey, look! There are some merchants coming here! Somebody help, please! I think they have heard Joseph shouting. 
why don't we sell our brother to these merchants? This way, we won't be accused of killing the dreamer and we will get few pennies too. That's a good idea. Come on, throw him a rope and let's pull him out of the well. The brothers sold Joseph to the Midianite merchants for 20 pieces of silver. And the merchants took Joseph to Egypt as a slave. Brothers, please don't let them take me. Ah, uh, stop crying and start walking. I'll break your leg if you try to escape. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. But how could you? Selling our own brother. It's unheard of. Nah, this is better. Remember that we were about to kill him. He's still alive, no? What are you going to say to father? Hey, look, I took Joseph's coat and I drenched it with goat's blood. Ah, that's great. Now we can make up some story on the way. Come on. Uh, at least he's alive now. God, please help him. Joseph's brothers dipped his coat in the blood of a goat and took it to their father. No, no, no. I think... I think the wild animals attacked him. What have I done? Oh, my son. My son, apple of my eye. Months later, the Midianites reached Egypt and they took him to the slave market for selling him. Fifty pieces of silver. Hundred pieces of silver. One thirty. Three hundred pieces of silver. What? Who is that? Who said 300? Come to the front, please. It's me! 300? Anyone wants to race on that? 300 once, 300 twice, and 300 final. Sold to Potiphar, the commander of the royal guards. Don't worry, you'll be taken care of. Thank you. Thank you. What's your name? And how did you end up here? It's Joseph, Master. Joseph told his story to Potiphar, the commander of the royal guards. Potiphar was kind to Joseph. Joseph was assigned to work in the field at first. Joseph worked hard and this pleased Potiphar. And Joseph was quickly promoted to various positions. Years passed. God blessed Joseph and he succeeded in every assignment he did. Potiphar was very happy with Joseph. Ha 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 ha! Joseph, we had a fantastic crop this year. Our neighbors got nothing, but your work helped us to double ours. Thank you, Master. It's all a blessing from God. I'm pleased with your work, Joseph. From now on, you are going to be in charge of my household. As you wish, Master. Keep up the good work, Joseph. You may leave now. Thank you, Master. He's so handsome. Wish he would at least look at me. Hmm. Ever since Joseph came to the city, Potiphar's wife had been secretly admiring Joseph. And one day, when Potiphar had gone out of the city, she decided to call Joseph into her chamber. Psst, Joseph! Here! Yeah, Joseph! Look here! Hello, madam. Hush! Joseph, I need to talk to you. What is it? What happened? Shh! Come inside my chamber. Mm, can't we talk here? Come on. Don't be shy. All right. Come in, Joseph. I... I... What's the matter? Joseph, I am tired of this life. My husband is a great man, but he's never home. He never has time for me. I... 
You must understand that my master is busy with many things. He's an important man. Stop. No, stop it. I'm going. Joseph, come here. Stupid. I will make you pay for this. Potiphar's wife decided to take revenge on Joseph and she lied to Potiphar when he returned. <laughs> that stupid Hebrew slave. <laughs> Joseph? Yes, Joseph. He he came into my chamber the other day. He did what? Yes. When I was alone, he came into my chamber and I ran out screaming. Look at this. It's Joseph's tunic. How dare you, Joseph? Potiphar put Joseph in prison where king's prisoners were kept. Why God? Why is this happening to me? Don't worry, Joseph. You could have done nothing. She's bad woman. What can we do? She's the wife of the commander. You are very kind, sir. God will protect the innocent. After many years, the pharaoh of Egypt called upon a meeting with his chiefs. The pharaoh was having troubling dreams, and he was looking for someone to interpret the meaning. But no one was able to offer any help. Is there nobody, nobody in the whole of Egypt who can interpret, who can interpret my dream? My lord, may I? Who are you? My lord, my name is Jela. I'm your chief warden. What do you have to say? My lord, there is a Hebrew prisoner in my ward who can interpret people's dream. When I was in prison, he interpreted my dreams and it happened just the way he explained. Hmm, bring him here. Maybe the prisoners are better than my ministers hanging around. So, you are the one my chief warden recommended? What's your name? My name is Joseph, my lord. My warden says you interpreted many of his dreams. Can you do that for mine too? My lord. It is God who sends dreams, and He is the one who reveals the meaning. May I hear about your dreams? I'll try my best to interpret it. All right. I had two dreams, and in the first one, I saw that there were seven healthy cows grazing by the river. But all of a sudden, seven lean and ugly cows came out of the water, and they swallowed all the healthy ones. What do you think? Can you tell them what that meant? Mm, can you tell me about your other dream? Hmm, I dreamt that seven heads of grain, healthy and sleek, were going on a single stalk. After them, seven other heads of grain sprouted, thin and scorched by the wind. The seven thin heads of the grain swallowed the healthy ones. Both dreams mean the same thing. God has revealed to you what He is going to do. The seven fat cows and the seven heads of grain mean that seven years of great riches will be coming to Egypt. But this will be followed by seven years of famine and many will die. Hmm, what do you think I should do? I think you should save the grain from the years of plenty and you can use them later during the famine. You should appoint someone who can do this work. Thank you, Joseph. But I don't think I can find another man like you who's so filled with the spirit of the God. You shall be chancellor and all my people shall respect your orders. Thank you. Thank you, your majesty. Here, take this ring. From now on, in all of Egypt, only I will be greater than you. You are generous, my lord. Thank you so much. Like Joseph foretold, 
After seven years of abundance, there was no rain after the seventh year. There were no crops and the animals died of starvation. But Joseph had collected one-fifth of land's crop and he was saving it for the famine. People from different lands arrived at Joseph's doorstep to buy the grains from him. One day, when the drought became severe in Canaan, Jacob sent his sons to buy some grain. His brothers also arrived at the doorstep, not knowing who Joseph really was. Do you think he will give us the grains, dear? Hmm, I think so. People say that he's a kind man. I hope our father is right in sending us here. Yes, I hope he will sell us some grain. Shh! Keep quiet. He's here. Bow the knee before Joseph, the Chancellor of Egypt. Why are my brothers here? I must teach them a lesson. Give the grains to everyone except those few. Make them stay back. I have to ask them a few questions. Who are you? Are you spies? No, my lord. We, we are poor Hebrews. Twelve sons of the same father. We, we... There are only ten of you here. I know that you are lying. My lord, one of us is no more and the youngest one is with our father. And the youngest one is with our father. It's true. We are not spies, my lord. Stop lying, you spies. Commander, put them in prison. Now. Have mercy. Please, my lord. No, please don't. My lord, please, please let us go. Our father, our brother, they'll die if we don't return. Please let us go. We are just too poor. We are just poor Hebrews, not any spies. All right, now stop crying. I'll let all except one to leave from here. You can take the grains too with you to Canaan. Bring your youngest one here. And I know you're honest people. Only then will I let the last one go. Only Simon remained in the jail and all other were let to go. When the brothers returned, they brought Benjamin along with them as Joseph had asked. Joseph was overjoyed seeing Benjamin, but he didn't want to reveal himself. He invited them to his dinner table and gave them a lavish treat. But when the dinner was about to get over, Joseph asked his chamberlain to take his silver cup and to hide it in Benjamin's sack. <laughs> I thought I was going to die in there. It's a miracle that he let us go. Brother, look, the soldiers are following us. Huh? Show us your bags. Sir, sir, we were just uh, let go by your master. It's he who asked us to search you. His silver cup was stolen this evening. But, but we don't know anything about that. It's here, sir. I've found it. You don't know anything, huh? You are going to be hung for this. My lord, I've brought the thieves. No, my lord, I didn't steal anything. Please, don't kill us, my lord. Please let us. There is no one to take care of our father. I didn't do anything. Please let us go. Please, please. Benjamin, my little brother, don't you still recognize me? You, you, you are jo Joseph. It's you. Yes, my little brother. It's me. Joseph? Our brother? But... It's really you! We are really sorry, brother. Don't feel sorry for yourself. It was God who sent me here to save many lives. Joseph was finally reunited with his family. Their father, 
Jacob was brought into Egypt and he was delighted to see his favorite son. Father, did Joseph have any children? Yes, they were named Manasseh and Ephraim. Wow, that was really good. <laughs> I'm glad that you liked the story. Father, aren't you going to ask us any questions today? No, my child. It's already late and I should leave now. Bye. Christian Family TV is made possible by your generosity. Because of your donation today, we were able to create more than 200 plus wonderful stories on saints, stories of faith, and many other interesting videos to teach our kids. Yes, you are making a difference. We could not do what we do without you. We want to remind you again to take a Patreon subscription. It only costs $2 to start with or make a one-time donation starting at $5. This will help us continue making these videos. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May He smile on you and be gracious to you. Thank you and God bless you. Hello, Matthew. Good morning, Father. Why are you sitting here alone? Where is Lucy and George? Lucy is there. And George is over there. What happened? Why aren't you guys playing together? Lucy and George had a fight and they are not talking to each other. <laughs> Is that so? And why did they fight with each other? Mm, we were playing hide and seek and Lucy is saying that George cheated. <laughs> mm, now go and tell them that I want to talk to them. I will tell them father. Lucy, Lucy! Lucy! Go away, Matthew. I don't want to talk to anybody. Lucy, Father John is here and he's calling you. I'm coming. All right, you go ahead. I have to call George also. George, George, Father John is calling you. Huh? Let's go then. Hey there, good morning. Why are you silent? Aren't you going to wish me back? Good morning, Father. Matthew told me that you both had a fight. Is that right? Yes, Father. This is George, he... No, don't tell me the reason, Lucy. She's lying, Father. It was she. Stop it, George. Now listen. Whatever the reasons might be, I want you both to forgive each other and say that you were sorry. But father... Lucy... I'm sorry, George. I shouldn't have fought with you. I'm sorry too. You're my best friend, Lucy. And I'll never repeat this. <laughs> See? Wasn't that easy? Thank you, father. Hmm. Now come on. Let's sit here. Today... I'm going to tell you the story of Ruth, a Moabite woman. She was an excellent example of how one should trust God. Her selfless love and total dedication to her mother-in-law is depicted as an example for all generations. Wow! Tell us a story, Father. All right. Now listen carefully.
long time back in a place called Moab there lived a woman named Naomi her husband had died a long time back and now recently her two sons too died she was now left with the wives of her sons Orpha and Ruth there's no point of sitting here and crying we can do nothing about it now Ruth you must listen to what I'm going to tell you what is it mother my daughters you're still young go back to your people and marry again you can have children of your own one day mother what are you saying no ruth stop you must do what i say i'm going back to bethlehem and you can't come with me but why can't i come to bethlehem with you because you're a moabite woman and in israel you'll always be a foreigner my dear orpha will you at least listen to me I will do whatever you wish me to do. Thank you, dear. Thank you so much. Now, Ruth, please. Mother, please don't insist. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you die, I will die. Your people shall be my people, and your God will be my God. Oh, dear. Ruth refused to part her mother and they both traveled together to Bethlehem. Do you see that mountain Ruth? That one? Yes, that's Nebo. It was from there that Moses viewed Canaan. Nebo? Hmm. Poor Moses. Why did you say that, mother? Oh, that. That's because after leading all the Israelites from Egypt, he died there. He died at the threshold of the promised land. The God of Israel is a God of the poor. He will not abandon me. While they were traveling, Naomi narrated the history of Israel to Ruth. And after many days of traveling, they finally reached Naomi's house in Bethlehem. Hey, look. Hey. Hmm. I think I've seen that face before. Hmm, isn't that Naomi? Yes, it's her. Come on. Naomi! Naomi, it's you. Naomi. You look so different. Yes, it's been so long since you left. Where is Elimelak and your sons? What happened now, me? No. Don't call me that anymore. Don't call me now, me. My life has become like this ruined house. I had everything when I left here, but I have come back empty-handed. I'm no more now, me, the happy one. I'll be called Mara. The sorrowful from now on. Don't worry, Naomi. It will be all right. <sighs> But the God hasn't abandoned me totally. He has left me with her, the wife of my son. She is a good woman. May God bless you. For many days, their neighbors helped them by giving food to eat. Mother. <sighs> Ruth, what is it? 
How long are we going to live on this charity? Yes, our neighbors are kind, but we mustn't burden them. Mother, I was thinking. What, dear? I was thinking that I can go and work somewhere. What? Yes, mother. Look, I'm healthy and I can work. But, dear, I can't bear that. Listen to me, mother. This is harvest season and I can go into the fields and glean. No, I can't bear to see my daughter glean in a stranger's land. But why should we be ashamed? You have told me that our God is the God of poor. That's right. But they might insult you calling you a foreigner. Mother, don't worry. I shall return by evening. God, father of orphans and protector of widows, please watch over my daughter. And that day, Ruth went to work in the fields. She started collecting the leftover ears of corn. Ah, it is scorching and I am thirsty. Where can I get some water? The field that Ruth chose to work that day was owned by Boaz, a relative of Naomi. On that day, Boaz came to the field to oversee the reaping. Who is that young woman? Oh her! Do you remember your aunt Naomi? Naomi? Wife of Elimelech. Yes, that young woman is the daughter-in-law of Naomi. She has me permission to glean in your field and I allowed. Hmm, they are poor widows. She hasn't taken any break all day. Hmm, I remember Naomi. She was a good woman and she was tried very hard. What's your name? Ah, uh, me? Yes, you come here. Yes, master. What's your name? My name is Ruth. I am wife of Naomi's son. I know. I am a relative of Naomi. Oh. You don't have to go anywhere else for gleaning. No one will bother you here. You may drink water from my servant's drawer. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. But what have I done to deserve this? You? You left everything and came here with your mother-in-law? Come with me. We'll have something to eat. Here, have this. Hmm, this is such delicious bread. Thank you. I'm glad you like it. Can I take this bread to my mother? She will like this very much. Of course you can. Thank you. Boaz liked Ruth very much and he decided to help her.
You pull a few ears of corn from the bundle and let them fall down. Let Ruth collect those. You have a good heart, Master. Lord God, protector of the weak, wonderful are your ways. Ruth, how was your day? And... And... How did you get so much grain? Ah, uh, Mother, Lord led me into the field of a man called Boaz, a very generous man. Did you... Did you say Boaz? <laughs> yes. He told me he was a relative of yours. Yes. He's my nephew, my cousin's son. He was so kind. He gave me a lot of bread and roasted grains too. Thank you, God. He also allowed me to glean in his field till the end of the harvest season. That's wonderful. Mother, let's give some bread and grains to our neighbor, Lady Maka. Yes, she is a kind woman and she helped us so much. Until the end of harvest season, Ruth gleaned in the fields of Boaz. She gleaned during the day and at night she sewed clothes for the poor. Let's go to bed, dear. You've been working all day. You go ahead, mother. I will finish this one and join you. But Ruth, look at you. You look so tired. Don't worry, mother. I will join you. Besides, tomorrow we are having the harvest feast. Boaz has invited me to. Really? You must wear your best clothes. And don't forget to put on your ornaments too. <laughs> I will, mother. Now you go ahead and sleep. This is big. Ha ha ha. Huh? This is the biggest harvest we had had in years. God has blessed us. God has been generous to you because you have been generous to poor people. Huh? Isn't that? Isn't that Ruth? Ruth? Where? I can't see her. Look at the front. No, I can't. Her? Huh? It is her. She is so beautiful. Yes, I too didn't realize that. Poor woman though. She has a good heart. She works all day and then she sews clothes for the poor. Hmm. I must pay a visit to her mother tomorrow. And the next day, Boaz came to Naomi's house. Good heavens! Boaz, my nephew! Hello, aunt. It's so good to see you. I, I, I am ashamed to receive you in this poor shack. Oh, aunt. The condition of this house doesn't matter at all, as long as you are happy. Happiness? That is not for me. I, I lost everything. Everything except this daughter whom... Don't worry. I'm here to talk about that daughter. Huh? What about Ruth? I... Uh, I wanted to talk to you first. Um... I'd like to marry Ruth, but only if you have no objection. Lord, you have heard my prayer. What do you say? Oh, Boaz, we will be honored, but... But what? You know, as per our custom, my brother's son is the next of the king. Your brother's son? Who? Sikri? 
Hmm, yes. As long as Sikri gives away his right, you cannot marry Ruth. Hmm, I didn't think about that. I'm sorry, Boaz. I want you to marry Ruth. I really do. But... Hmm, I have to think about this. Don't worry, aunt. I'll talk to Sikri and figure out a solution. The next day, Boaz gathered Sikri and ten elders at the city gate. Everyone, the widow of Elimelach is selling a piece of land. Sikri, you are the next of their kin. You are entitled to buy it. Do you want to buy it? Yes, I will buy the land from El Malak's widow. And as you buy the land, you are bound to marry her daughter-in-law. She is a Moabite woman. You must marry her and restore her late husband's name. What? Are you joking? Are you saying that I should marry a Gentile woman? A foreigner? Yes, that is the law of Israel. If you buy the land, then you will have to marry her. Huh? No. No, I don't want the land. Huh? What? Are you giving up your right? Yes, I am. I don't want to marry a Moabite woman. Then you must swear it. Sacre, you must renounce your right in our custom. Give your shoe to Boaz. All right. Here. I hereby renounce my right to buy Naomi's land. And as a sign, I'm giving my shoes to Boaz. We hereby proclaim Boaz as the legitimate here of Naomi's property. Boaz's plan worked and Sikri renounced his rights. After a few days, Boaz married Ruth. According to the law of Moses and Israel, I accept you, Ruth, as my wife. I shall be faithful to you until death. May the God of Israel look kindly upon you. May you be honored in Israel through your descendants. Ruth and Boaz had a son, and they named him Obed. And Obed's son, Jesse, was the father of King David. That was a great story, father. Yes, father, we loved it. Hmm, now shall I ask you a few questions from the story then? Yes, father. Why did Naomi and Ruth go back to Bethlehem? Naomi's husband had died a long time ago and she lost her sons too. Naomi and Ruth had no one else in Moab and that's why she left to her hometown. Excellent, George. And was Ruth born in Bethlehem too? No, father. Ruth was born in Moab and she was a Moabite. Good, Lucy. Now tell me why Naomi changed her name. Naomi meant the happy one. When Naomi lost her husband and her sons, she decided to change her name to Mara, which meant the sorrowful one. Right again, George. Now tell me how Boaz and Naomi were related. Boaz was Naomi's nephew. That was quick, Matthew. Good one. Hmm. Now tell me why Sikri refused to marry Ruth. Sikri did not want to marry a Gentile woman widow and that's why he let go of his right for Naomi's land. That's right again. And for the last question, how was King David and Ruth related? Boaz and Ruth had a son named Obed who was the grandfather of King David. That's correct, George. It's time for us to leave. Father, what story are you going to tell us tomorrow? Tomorrow? Hmm. Uh, I'll tell you the story of Samuel tomorrow, my child. Ah, the story of Samuel? Yes, the story of Samuel. We will meet again tomorrow. Goodbye, children. 
Goodbye, Father. Christian Family TV is made possible by your generosity. Because of your donation today, we were able to create more than 200 plus wonderful stories on saints, stories of faith, and many other interesting videos to teach our kids. Yes, you are making a difference. We could not do what we do without you. We want to remind you again to take a Patreon subscription. It only costs $2 to start with or make a one-time donation starting at $5. This will help us continue making these videos. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May He smile on you and be gracious to you. Thank you, and God bless you. Hello kids, how are you Matthew? I'm fine father. Father, you told us that you will be telling the story of Elijah today. Yes Lucy, I will tell you the story of Elijah today. Who was he father? Elijah was the first prophet of God. Prophet? Yes, a prophet was a spokesman of God, a defender of the covenant. Hmm. Do you remember the story of King Solomon? Yes, Father, you told us a story yesterday. Yes, when Solomon became the king, his wives introduced idol worship in Israel. This was a disaster. Consequently, authority became corrupt. The poor and the weak were treated very cruelly. Worst of them was a king named Ahab and his wife Jezebel. He and most of other people worshipped a god named Baal. It is during this period when prophets appeared and Elijah was the first of such prophets. Elijah's name meant, My God is the Lord. And true to his name, he was a man burning in his faith to the Lord. It all started when God asked Elijah to deliver a message to the king. I hear the cries of innocent people everywhere. Lord, anyone who worships you is being slaughtered. What can I do? What can I do? I've become so old and weak. God, why are you being so silent? Elijah. Huh? God? Elijah, fear not. I am with you. Go to Naboth's vineyard and meet King Ahab there. I will, Lord. I will go and meet him. Please, my king. I have done nothing wrong. Nothing wrong, you say? How about worshipping false gods? No, my lord. I worship only one true God, the God of Israel. Huh? How dare you? Don't you know that Baal is the one true God? Take him away and kill him and kill everyone who doesn't worship our great god Baal. No, please don't! No! Come here, you fool! Hmm, the vineyard is beautiful. Jezebel's idea worked. <laughs> All we had to do was to accuse Naboth falsely, the owner of this vineyard, and then kill him. And, and now, this whole vineyard is mine. Ha 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 ha! Brilliant! Ahab, you are the curse of Israel. Huh? Who was that? Who are you? My name is Elijah. I have come here to deliver a message from God. What is that? You have done what is displeasing to me. You filled the land with idols and led Israel into sin. You denied justice to the poor. You committed a murder and now you are taking his property as well. I will bring disaster on your family. Your children will be eaten by vultures and dogs will eat your wife, Jezebel. I'm sorry. I have sinned. Please, 
Please pray that the Lord may forgive me. Please. No. You have no forgiveness. You have defiled the land with idols. No rains will fall on this land until I say, let your bell give you the crops. After announcing the judgment of God, Elijah turned and walked away. Elijah knew that if he was found, then he would get killed. So he went into the wilderness and he hid himself near a stream. King Ahab returned to the palace and told his wife Jezebel everything what had happened. I I don't know what to do. That prophet his words frighten me. Don't be a fool, dear. You know that it is Baal who sends the rain and gives us good crops. But there's nothing to worry about. If it's still troubling you, then we will offer special sacrifices to Baal from tomorrow. But that prophet His words are still haunting me. What was his name? I'll send soldiers to catch that old fool. We will let the people watch as he's been sacrificed to Baal. Ha. I I don't think we can find him. Nobody knows where he comes and where he goes. Listen to me, dear. I think it's better for us to repent and turn to the God of Israel. Never. There will be no god but Baal. I will find that old man even if he's hiding under the earth I will find him and kill him ha huh. Jezebel sent her soldiers everywhere in search of Elijah but nobody could find him in the meantime just like God told Ahab a severe drought came over the land trees and plants dried up but God took care of Elijah he drank water from the stream and crows brought him bread praise and glory to the lord who provides me with bread and water the drought became so harsh that the crops died up and the cattle began to die too jezebel thought baal would be pleased by human sacrifices and send rain so she started sacrificing the israelites one by one Help me. No. Go away. Ha. Mother, help me. How long, my lord? How long? Poor people are starving to death. The blood of your faithful servants is flooding Baal's altar. Why are you silent my lord? Elijah. Huh? Yes my lord. You must go to Sarapta in Sidon. There a widow will give you food. The stream is going to dry up. Yes my lord. I will. Heeding God's words, Elijah left the forest and left for Sarapta. He walked for many days without food and water. And finally he arrived at the village of Sarapta. Is this the village of Sarapta? Yes. Who are you? You look tired. I have been walking for many days. Can you can you please give me a morsel of bread and some water to drink, please? Mm. I all we have is flour left for just one bread and little oil. I I was going to bake it and eat it with my son before we die. Don't worry. Go home and make food for you and your son. But first, make a small loaf of bread for me and bring it to me. The Lord has told me that if you do this, your jar will never go empty and the jug of oil will never go dry. Huh? I will come back in a while then. So the old woman went home and did as Elijah told her. The jar was refilled with flour and the jug never ran out of oil. Huh? But it's a miracle.
God worked a miracle for them and they never ran out of food for many days. The bin of flour was never used up nor did the jug of oil. Elijah lived with them as long as the drought lasted but one day No! My son! What happened? Why are you crying? My son! He... He... What happened? Tell me! He... He died today. He was sick for many days. Huh? Hmm. Do not worry. Your son will live. Let me go to him. Lord, my God, hear your servant's prayer. You are the refuge of the poor and the father of the orphans. Let this child live again. The Lord heard Elijah's prayers. The soul of the child came back to him and he was alive again. Huh? What happened? Huh? You are alive? My son! Mother! My son! You are back! Thank you, God! Thank you! Now I know that the word of the Lord in your mouth is the truth. After three and a half years of drought, God ordered Elijah to return to Israel. King Ahab met him at the city gate. You are the curse of Israel! How dare you come back to Israel? <laughs> You're so angry. Didn't your god Baal give you any rains yet? It's all because of you. It's all your tricks. The people are suffering because of you. Hmm. Then listen to me. Gather all the people of Israel on Mount Carmel tomorrow. Huh? You must invite all the priests and prophets of Baal too. What are you going to do? You will see that tomorrow. The people of Israel assembled at Mount Carmel the next day. All the priests and prophets of Baal were there too. There were as many as 850 of them present there. How long are you going to worship two different gods? How long will you keep changing your mind? If the Lord is God, follow Him. But if Baal is God, then you follow Him. This is what we are going to do. I am the only prophet left of the Lord and Baal has over 850. Get two bulls and place one on each altar. But do not light the fire. Whoever sends the fire to consume the sacrifice will be the one true God. That's a great idea. Yes, we'll know who is true God today. Ah, what does he think he's doing? He is challenging us. What if we fail? Yes, I'm scared. The king will kill us if we fail. What are you afraid of? Get the bulls. Prove that Baal is your true God! Prophet Elijah looks so confident. Look at the priest of Baal! They are shaking like leaves! <laughs> well, there are about 800 of Baal's priests here. Let them start first. Bring the bulls! Baal's priest prepared the altar. They laid the wood, cut up the bull and laid placed it on the altar. Then they started calling out to Baal, their God. Lord Bell, send down the fire! Fire, 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 God Bell! 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 My God, I hope this works. What happened? Your God is not hearing your prayers? Call louder! Maybe he's sleeping or must have gone out for a walk. Shout louder! <laughs> fire, 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 God Baal! The priests shouted and danced around the altar, yelling to Baal to start the fire. They shouted and shouted from morning to noon with no answer. Why isn't our God sending the fire? 
Is it? Maybe he isn't the true god at all. Hmm. Let's see if Elijah's god sends the fire. Elijah's altar. Finally, Elijah called the people over to his altar. He began to make his altar. He placed the woods, took some stones and put them around his altar. Then Elijah did something very strange. He asked the people to pour water over his bull and the wood. Huh? Did he just ask us to pour water over his altar? Yeah. How will the wood burn if we pour water on them? <laughs> he is a fool. If Baal can't help us, then how can his god send the fire? People did as Elijah said. They poured water over the woods and the bull. Everything now was soaked in water. After the entire altar was soaked, Elijah stepped forward and simply prayed, "O oh Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, show us today that you are the real God of Israel and that all I have done is obeyed you. Show your power to these wavering people. Let them see that you are the one true God." Just as Elijah finished his prayer, fire burst out of the altar and everything was covered in flames. Every single thing was burned down to nothing and even the water in the trenches were gone. Huh? The people watched completely amazed and they began to fall on their knees. The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is real God. We are sorry, Lord. You are the true God. What? How did that happen? Run! Run for your lives! Catch the priest of Baal! Let no one escape! Kill them! Kill them all! Run away if you want to save yourself! Ahab escaped from there and reached the palace. He explained what took place at Mount Carmel. Jezebel grew furious when she heard that all the priests of Baal had been killed. How could you let that happen? I'm sorry, dear. I couldn't do anything. I, I swear by Baal, whom I worship, that Elijah will be dead by tomorrow. Elijah knew that Jezebel would send men to kill him. He fled into the wilderness. He was tired and took rest under a tree. Lord God, I can do no more. I'm sorry. I'm no better than my forefathers who were killed. Let me die too. Elijah fell asleep under that tree, but sometime late, an angel of God woke him up. Elijah. Huh? 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 Get up and eat. You still have a long way to go. He was strengthened by the bread and water. He then walked for 40 days and 40 nights to reach Mount Horeb. Huh? Hmm. This is the mountain of the Lord, the mountain Abraham climbed to sacrifice Isaac, the mountain where God made the covenant with Israel. I need to go up and hide myself there. Elijah climbed up the mountain. And he hid himself inside one of the caves. He stayed there for many days. Suddenly, an earthquake took place. Huh? What's happening? This was followed by a storm and a fire. Ah! 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 This was then followed by a gentle breeze. Elijah then walked to the entrance of the cave. God, what's happening? Elijah, what are you doing here? My Lord, all your prophets have been killed. Only I am left now and the soldiers are hunting for me too. Elijah, there are still 7,000 people in Israel who haven't bent their knees before Baal. Go back to Israel. Anoint Elisha to be your successor. I'm going to execute 
what I said against Ahab. As commanded by the Lord, Elijah returned to Israel for his revolutionary mission. Hmm. He must be Elisha. Did Ahab die as God had warned? Yes, Ahab went to war against Ben-Hadad, king of Syria. He was mortally wounded in the war and he died later on. And what happened to Jezebel? She died too as God had warned and because of the sins she had committed, her body was eaten by dogs. Now, shall I start with the questions? Yes, Father. Alright, now tell me what the name Elijah meant. The name Elijah means, my Lord is my God. That's correct, Lucy. Who was the king of Israel during those times? Ahab was the king of Israel and his wife was Jezebel. That's right, Matthew. Very good. Now, who can tell me why Elijah had to escape from Israel the first time? Elijah had warned the king about the judgment of God. When Jezebel heard about this, she got really angry and she sent soldiers to kill Elijah. That's right again, Lucy. What did Elijah do to prove that the Lord God was the true God of Israel? Elijah and the priests placed their sacrifices on different altars and waited for the God to send the fire. Elijah said that whichever God sends the fire will be the true God of Israel. Very good, George. And Matthew, you tell me, whose sacrifice was lit by fire sent by God? God consumed Elijah's offering by sending fire from the heaven. That's right again, Matthew. Very good. That's all for today, children. Now I shall see you tomorrow with the next story, the story of Amos. Goodbye, children. Goodbye, Father. Christian Family TV is made possible by your generosity. Because of your donation today, we were able to create more than 200 plus wonderful stories on saints, stories of faith, and many other interesting videos to teach our kids. Yes, you are making a difference. We could not do what we do without you. We want to remind you again to take a Patreon subscription. It only costs $2 to start with, or make a one-time donation starting at $5. This will help us continue making these videos. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May He smile on you and be gracious to you. Thank you, and God bless you. Bored, Matthew? Yes, I am. Huh? Hey, look over there. Wow, it's such a large fish. It looks like it will swallow all the other fishes here in the stream. Is this a small whale? Ha <laughs> ha! No, Matthew. This is not a whale. A whale lives in the sea and it's way, way bigger than this. Hmm. In the story Father John told us yesterday, he told us that a whale swallowed Prophet Jonah, right? Yes, a whale is the biggest fish in the sea. Is it bigger than the elephants? Hmm, it's very, very big than an elephant. And is it bigger than a dinosaur? Haha, <laughs> yes, Matthew, it's much bigger than a dinosaur. Oh, now I know how Jonah could live inside the fish for three days. Hey, look! George is coming. Hello, George. Hello, Matthew. Hi, Lucy. Hi. Didn't Father John come yet? He told he will be telling us a story today. Oh, there he is. Hello, kids. I have brought something for you. Wow! It's a coloring book. And it also contains the stories from the Bible. Look here, this one has the story of creation in it. Ha <laughs> ha! Look here, it's Adam! Yes, and there's Eve too, here. Can I get one, Father? Of course, 
I brought these for you. Thank you, father. And here, Lucy, this one's for you. Wow, this one has the story of Cain and Abel in it. Thank you, father. And George, here, this is for you. The story of Noah. I love a story. Thank you, father. Remember, kids, you must read the book while coloring the pages. These books will help you remember the Bible stories that I have been telling you. Thank you, Father. All right. Now come on. Let's sit there. Everyone ready for today's story? Today I'm going to tell you the story of Job, a wealthy trader. A long time ago, in the land of Uz, there lived a man named Job. He was the richest man in the Middle East and he was also a royal servant to God. Job was very kind to the poor and never hesitated in helping them when they needed. Master! Master! Oh, hello Jacob. How have you been? No, I am in trouble, Master. I, I need your help. What happened, Jacob? Tell me. Master, my daughter is sick and I think she's going to die. Huh? Come, let's go to your house and let me take a look at her. Thank you, Master. Please come with me. There, that's my house. Come, let's go in and take a look at her. There she is. She she has been lying like that for two weeks now. Oh, she's got a very high temperature. Didn't you take her to the physician? I, I... I'm sorry, Master. We couldn't afford to take her to the physician, as we didn't have any money with us. What? Why did you come to me, Jacob? Did you ever think that I would hesitate to help you? I'm sorry, Master. We already owe you a lot of money and I was ashamed to borrow again from you. Hmm. You shouldn't have thought so. Anyways, come, let's take her to the physician. There is no time to waste. Don't worry, Jacob. She's going to be all right. The physician is looking at her, and she will be well soon. I hope she is going to be okay. Master Job, it's so nice of you to bring this poor girl to my place. That's nothing. But tell me, how is she? Her mother and father is anxious to know her condition. Oh, she's going to be all right. You brought her just in time to give her the treatment. She needs a few days rest, but she'll be fine in a week's time. Thank you, Lord. You saved our daughter. Thank you, Master. It's because of you that our child is saved. It's all right, Jacob. Come on, stand up. Job helped the poor and needy whenever he could. God had blessed Job with health and prosperity. He had seven sons and three daughters. How many men did we feed today? The dining hall was full today also, my master. At this rate, we will need a larger hall pretty soon. Hmm, that's good. God has blessed us abundantly and we must share it with the poor. Sir, I appreciate your intentions. But if we continue to just give away free food, then the poor people will become lazy and they will never work at all. Hmm. Why don't we ask them to work in our fields and warehouses? That's a brilliant idea, sir. I will ask our men pass orders today itself. Food for work. It's a great idea, sir. God has blessed us and our master job. Yes, there's no question about it. His business is going so well and he also ensures that everyone around him are happy. Did you hear about his orders yesterday? Yes, I did. It was so kind of him to offer work in return for food for the poor. No other rich man in our kingdom is as kind as him. Yes, may God bless him and his children.
Job owned thousands of ships through which he traded with distant lands. He brought gold and spices from abroad and sold it to Arabs and Egyptians. Job also had thousands of cattle, sheep and donkeys. Because of God's blessings, he was the richest man in the Middle East. Almighty God, thank you for all your blessings. Please forgive me and my children for our sins. Come on, dear. It's getting late. We have to reach there before the celebration starts. I'm coming. Huh? Is there something wrong? You don't look all right. Hmm. I don't know. I'm feeling rather down today. Master, master, what happened, Jonathan? Why are you running? Master, your sons. What happened to my sons? What happened, Jonathan? Tell us. Your sons and daughters, they were celebrating at their elder brother's house. They were hit by a huge tornado, master. Oh no. Everyone was killed in the storm. Only I survived. I'm sorry, master. Oh my children. Huh? Who is that? Isn't he one of our men from the farms? Master, master. Tell me, what is it? Quickly. I just got the news that my children have died. Master, the Midianites, they they attacked us and took all our cattle and sheep. Huh? Wasn't there anyone to stop them? They killed all our men, master. Only I managed to escape. One by one, Job's men came to his house announcing terrible news. Master, our warehouses were burned down. Many of our men died trying to put out the fire. The robbers, they attacked our caravans. They took all our camels and donkeys. What about our men? They killed all our men too. Only I managed to escape. Master, our ships. I don't know what happened, but all of them were destroyed in a storm. Job lost everything he had that day, including his children. But Job never lost his faith in Lord in spite of so much suffering. My children. God. Please tell me what's going on. God? Are you praying to him even now? Is this the reward that you got for serving him faithfully all these years? Dear, calm down. You shouldn't be talking like that. Calm down. You are such a fool for praying to him. Huh? In the Lord who gave us everything, and now he took everything back. We should praise his name and never complain. All this while, we had been receiving his blessings from God. Now, we must be ready to accept the pains as well. Yes, you go ahead and praise him. I'm never going to praise your God. Your God who took the lives of my children. God, please tell me why you are doing this. Job then tore his robe away, shaved his head, and sat on the ground covering his body with ashes. Lord, and Lord has taken away. Blessed in the name of Lord. In all this while, never did Job blame God for what had happened. But Job's hardship was far from over. After a few days, Job was struck by leprosy. The disease was so terrible that his whole body had started to stink. Ah, oh, it's itching so badly. Huh? It's stinking here. Be patient, dear. It's all happening according to his will. How can you praise your God in spite of all this? Your God has been so cruel to us. Why don't you curse him and die? I am almost like a dead man. Even if I die and my flesh withers away, I will praise the Lord. You and your God, you can do whatever you want. I am leaving you. God, hearing about the misfortunes of Job, three of his friends, Eliphaz, 
Bildad and Zophar came to see him. Oh my God, what a sight! Come in, Elphas, Bildad, Zophar, you have come too. Job, what's happening to you? My God, is this the same rich and famous Job of Middle East? Oh, I can't stand the sight. Job's friends couldn't stand the sight of Job's sufferings, and in pain, they tore their robes open. They sat near Job for seven days in silence. They wept for him, for they could see the pain Job was going through. And at the end of seven days, Ah, oh Lord, I'm tired. I cannot go on like this. Please let me die. Let me die so that I can get relief from this pain. My friend, we understand your pain. Why are you losing your heart when you were the one who strengthened the hearts of many people? How can you lose your courage in this time of trouble? God will never allow a just man to suffer. You have no idea of my pain. Look at my skin. My whole body has become an open wound. I don't have any strength left, and I'm hopeless about the future. Do you think our God's will is under? Maybe your children died for the sins they had committed. But you should never lose your hope. If you are pure and upright, then God will surely answer your prayers. No. Strangling me to death would have better than this never-ending torture. A man's life on earth is merely a slavery. I'm longing for my death now. Your desire to die is a proof of the sins you might have committed. God will never be unfair. You should ask your forefathers. They will tell you the same from their experience. You tell me. How can a man ever be just before God, who has ever defied him and prospered? I hate my life, life and death. It's all one to me. I am now declaring this openly. God destroys the wicked as well as the innocents. Huh? Just, just leave me alone. Let me breathe freely for a moment. All these speeches is not going to justify you. What do you know about God? Maybe, just maybe, you haven't received one tenth of the punishment you deserve. Just repent, my friend. Repent and return to Lord. Raise your hands in prayer, and you will receive His blessings. Ha! <sighs> All these speeches of wisdom, you are repeating the same old things that others have said. I know those too. I am innocent. Yet you laugh at me. Tell me. Tell me what wrong have I done? I was like the eyes to the blind, legs to the lame, and a father to the needy. I saved the poor and the orphans. I destroyed the wicked people. This misery is a proof of your wickedness. You took the coat of a poor man in a pledge. You snatched the bread from the hungry. You exploited widows and oppressed the orphans. Do you still claim to be just? And by now, Job was getting really confused. He did not understand what was happening to him, and he thought that God was punishing him without a reason. Lies, lies. They are all lies. Even my friends are accusing me now. I want him to come down and answer me. And suddenly, Job had a vision. And in his vision, God answered Job's questions. Huh? Where am I, Job? Who are you to question me and challenge my designs? I will ask you a few questions. And you should try answering me. Where were you when I founded the earth? You say you have the knowledge. 
you answer me? Who set the limits for the sea? Will the sun rise if you demand? Do you show the birds their way in the sky? Do you know the depths of the sea and the width of the earth? Do you know how many stars are there in the sky? I... I am sorry. I don't know. If you do not know such simple things, then how would you know about my plans? I'm sorry, my lord. I take back everything I had said. I repent for everything. I was testing Job's faith, and even in sufferings, he remained faithful to me. My friend, please forgive me for what I had said. Please, pray to God for us. God restored Job's fortunes. He was blessed with many children, and he lived for a long time and witnessed many of his generations. And that was a story. Father, I have a doubt. What is it, Lucy? Did Job lose his faith in God when he was sick? No, Lucy. But Job was thrown into a bitter eternal conflict. On one side, he knew how God was just and kind. And on the other hand, he knew that he was innocent and didn't deserve to be punished like that. His faith in the kindness of God had made his sufferings even more painful. Job firmly believed that it was God who was punishing him, apparently for no reason. He complains to God, but God doesn't respond. And this made him even more confused and sad. Is that why God came and cleared his doubts? Yes, that's why he spoke to Job in his vision. The moment Job heard what God said, he fell silent. It was not because he understood the reason for his suffering, but because he learned that God's ways are beyond his understanding. But doesn't Bible teaches us that the suffering is the result of sins? Not always, Lucy. Look at Isaiah the prophet. He was a just man. But didn't he suffer for the sins that Israelites had committed? Huh, yes. Jesus, who suffered and died on the cross for the sins of the world, is the greatest example of suffering the just men had to face. Now I understand. Thank you, Father. All right. Now shall I ask you a few questions? Where did Job live? He lived in the land of Uz. Correct, Matthew. How many children did he have? He had seven sons and three daughters. Who can tell me the name of three friends who came to visit Job when he was sick? They were Eliphaz, Bildad, and, and, and Zophar. Correct both of you. Now I want you all to repeat this verse with me. The Lord gave, the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of Lord. The Lord gave, the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of Lord. Very good children. That's all for today. Tomorrow I will tell you the story of Tobit. Who was he? He lived a long time ago in the city of Nineveh. He had a son named Tobias who was protected by an angel. An angel? Wow! <laughs> I will tell you the story tomorrow. Take care everyone. Bye! Goodbye, Goodbye Father! Christian Family TV is made possible by your generosity. Because of your donation today, we were able to create more than 200 plus wonderful stories on saints, stories of faith, and many other interesting videos to teach our kids. Yes, you are making a difference. We could not do what we do without you. We want to remind you again to take a Patreon subscription. It only costs $2 to start with or make a one-time donation starting at $5. This will help us continue making these videos. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May He smile on you and be gracious to you. Thank you and God bless you.